Today we can continue from Part 1 HDMI versus DisplayPort. Today's our topics. Cable length. More features means more problems, but I don't have DisplayPort nor HDMI. In my MacBook Pro, don't forget the graphics card. There's another key aspect to consider which puts HDMI in a better light. It was developed primarily for home entertainment systems, not PCs, and supports far longer cables than DisplayPort does, especially at high resolutions and refresh rates. For example, at 4K, 60Hz, it's generally recommended that with DisplayPort 1.4, you keep the cable length under 6 feet, even if it's a high-quality one. Apply the same display configuration to a HDMI setup, and you're looking at up 20 feet. If you're using the DP cable that came bundled with your monitor, and you've noticed that the setup is somewhat unstable, you might find that switching to HDMI solves all your problems. You can buy active display port cables, which have powered circuitry to boost the signal if you need to go really long, but they are expensive. Although VESA and the HDMI group have a certified labeling system, supposedly to clearly indicate what resolution and refresh rate the cable supports, it's not monitored in any way, nor do we see much in the way of any litigation being taken out against falsely labeled products, which does make choosing the right cable somewhat of a lottery. It's about striking a balance, ignore the cheap, never heard of before brands that fill the likes of Amazon's shelves, and stick to known brands e.g. Lindy, Belkin, Snowkids, TrueHQ. Conversely, don't be suckered in by claims of better performance with the very expensive ones. $20 for a 7 feet display port cable, rated for 8K at 60 Hz, is more than enough. Choice Display Port with a short length, high quality cable. More features means more problems. Monitors with HDR enabled use 10 bits per color channel, rather than the usual 8 bits, to generally improve the variation in light and color levels viewed on the screen. Those extra bits eat into the available transmission bandwidth available, which in turn cuts down on the maximum resolution and refresh rate combination possible. For example, the Samsung Odyssey G727 has a HDR maximum refresh rate of 120Hz when using DisplayPort, but just a miserly 60Hz with HDMI. And don't forget that one of its key selling features is its 240Hz max rate. It's a similar situation with variable refresh rate VRR, a technology that allows the refresh rate to dynamically change over a specific range so that vertical synchronization ACA VSync can be enabled and not cause performance problems. This locks the swapping about of the GPU's frame buffers to coincide with the refreshing of the monitor screen. The result is a seamless display on the monitor with no tearing running across the image coupled with a high refresh rate and it's a delight on the eyes. AMD and NVIDIA have their own versions of VRR and it's something we've looked at before, but whichever one you go with, the range of rates available is almost always narrower with HDMI compared to DisplayPort. Sticking with the Odyssey G7 again HDR disabled, the VRR range is 60 to 240 hertz with DisplayPort, but 48 to 144 hertz with HDMI. We've taken a smattering of monitors currently on the market, and you can see how the two display connection system handle the use of HDR or VRR. Take a look at the three 4K monitors shown above and it's clear that using HDMI 2.1 alone doesn't always guarantee that you'll be able to max out all of the features, resolution, and refresh rate. It's fair to say that some manufacturers are somewhat coy when it comes to being upfront about what their products are actually capable of. Display DR400 and 600 aren't really worth the cost in refresh rate, or even using for that matter, but VRR definitely is. It nearly always works at rates lower than the minimum specified and even if your PC can't render graphics fast enough to match the highest refresh rate, the use of FreeSync or G-Sync will ensure that the monitor displays consistently smooth images. Choice, DisplayPort, easily. But I don't have DisplayPort, nor HDMI. You may be reading this on a computer that doesn't have any obvious DisplayPort or HDMI ports. For example, Apple's latest MacBook Air sports a single Thunderbolt 3 and two USB-C ports. Thunderbolt actually combines a PCI Express and DisplayPort interface in one, with the latter offering up to 40 Gbps of transmission bandwidth. That's on a par with HDMI 2.1 and it's actually good enough for a maximum resolution of 6016x3384 at 60Hz. If you want to take advantage of VRR, you'll need to check the device's specifications carefully. MacBooks from the past three years support it though it goes by the VESA name of Adaptive Sync, but only with DisplayPort. It's not going to work with HDMI or DisplayPort to HDMI adapters. Phones, tablets, and lightweight laptops may come with nothing more than a USB-C port. Fortunately, if you want to connect to an external display, there's a handy feature in that technology although it's not always implemented by the manufacturer simply titled DisplayPort. HDMI over USB-C. 
This system takes advantage of USB's alternate mode, allowing for a DisplayPort or HDMI transmission to be sent through a USB 3.1 interface, even while using it as a normal USB connection. There's a little less bandwidth available, compared to a regular DisplayPort HDMI connection, so you won't be able to hook a phone up to a 4AY 144Hz monitor and run it at maximum settings, but it will be fine for 4AY 60Hz or 1440p 120Hz. Choice, tie, although it should be DisplayPort if you're using Apple products. Don't forget the graphics card. When it comes to high refresh rate gaming, using DisplayPort or HDMI is dictated by the graphics card. If the GPU isn't up to churning out your favorite games at 144fps or more, then which socket you connect your monitor isn't all that important. Take our recent look at the PC version of Spider-Man Remastered. For example, at 4K, set to medium quality, there wasn't a single graphics card whose 1% low was 144fps or more. Nvidia's RTX 3090 came close, though, and this card along with AMD's Radeon 6950 XT is the only sensible choice for gaming at 4K 120Hz or more. They may well struggle to hit those rates in every game, but the use of VRR will mean images will be tear-free and you'll still get a decent refresh rate. Coming further down the price range I, E, into the realms of normality, the Radeon 670XT and GeForce RTX 3070 are both excellent cards and are good enough for 1440p at 120Hz or 1080p at 240Hz. This is, of course, highly dependent on the game and what graphics setting are being used. High refresh gaming nearly always involves making some compromises somewhere along the lines. The Radeon 660XT and GeForce RTX 3060 are best suited to 1080p gaming, but if you're after refresh rates with VRR enabled greater than 100Hz, you'll have to drop a few graphics settings in many games. This is especially true if you're aiming for something like 1080p at 360Hz. Such a configuration is very much the preserve of competitive esports, and even with the detail levels cranked right down, you're almost certainly going to need a top-end PC, replete with a $1000 plus graphics card, to stand any chance of running at that rate. But whatever graphics card you have, you'll notice one thing in common with them all, the number of DisplayPort ports compared to HDMI ones. GPUs released today typically sport three DisplayPort sockets and just the one HDMI. But why? Remember that HDMI had a slow adoption in the world of PCs and by the time the likes of VGA and DVI were being replaced, DisplayPort was available and was far superior to HDMI. Today, the latter is still seen as the preserve of televisions and consoles, hence why GPU vendors still prefer to load up their models with multiple DP ports, which is perfect if you want to set up a multiple monitor, high refresh rate gaming system for flight or motorsport sims, for example. But do note that the display engine of the GPU can only output so many pixels per second, and NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090 supports a maximum resolution of 7680x4320-33 to m pixels HDR at 60Hz. All those pixels can be sent to a single monitor, or distributed across multiple ones, so you could easily have three 1440p monitors running at 120Hz, with the aforementioned graphics card assuming the game can cope with that resolution. The monitors themselves could be attached to individual DP sockets or, using DisplayPort's daisy-chaining feature, hooked up to just the one port and then again to each monitor in the chain. NVIDIA's card only support a maximum of four monitors, though, unlike AMD's which support up to six. Unfortunately, HDMI doesn't have a daisy-chain feature, and with most cards only having one or two HDMI sockets at best, DisplayPort is the clear choice for multi-monitor gaming. Choice, for sheer number of outputs, DisplayPort. Closing words, it shouldn't have come as a surprise that DisplayPort was the best choice for high refresh rate gaming, or for that matter, PCs in general. The latest revision of HDMI is very good, but it's somewhat of a jack-of-all-trades, providing support for TVs, consoles, media players, as well as computers, but that breadth of usability curtails its outright performance, in comparison to DisplayPort, and the latter provides the best support for high resolutions, high refresh rates, and other gaming features. We'll close this overview of DisplayPort versus HDMI for high refresh rate gaming, with a simple three-word chant, cables, cables, cables. Don't go cheap and use whatever's rattling around in the box, as you may find your cherished gaming machine isn't quite as stable as it could be. Use one from a known brand and follow the labels, pick the right one for your exact needs.